Hello there everyone and welcome to a new review on the channel. Today we're looking at a very talked about product and a very popular one for both positive and negative reasons and that is ED Seat by Craig Petty. A good little release that I like personally, I really like. So I can't wait to talk about it, talk about some of the positives, some of the negatives of it and kind of bring some light to what this is and what it can accomplish. So having said all that, let's roll the intro and get straight into the review. Perfect, so you decide to stick around, which means you want to learn more about ED Seat. Now, what is ED Seat? As per the name, it is an everyday carry using receipts that is gonna let you do a classic of magic, but instead of using numbers for a reveal, you are using items, which is great. So I can't really perform this to you because I don't have a spectator, but I'm gonna pretend that I'm gonna be both the spectator and the magician, and I'm gonna show you exactly how this would play out even if you had a spectator. So you would come from your wallet and you would bring out here some receipts and you would tell to your spectator that you wanna do something here oh, with some receipts and you don't need this, but you'd place your credit card to the side. And what you have here are some receipts. So you would use any pattern that you want for this but you would introduce these receipts and use any pattern that you want. You would have your spectator mix them up if they so wish and choose any receipt that they like. Let's say this one, right? It can be literally any receipt that they like. They're gonna look at it and they're gonna choose one item from this um, receipt. So, okay, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna choose that. So the spectator chooses one and they tell you when they have one and when they do, they're gonna place the receipt right on the side. And then you tell them, Perfect, so these receipts, I got them because X, so you justify your pattern. And for me, I would say something around the lines of, so these are the receipts that I had when I went on a small vacation to the UK to go to uh, a convention. And I was uh, set in a room with someone and we had different, th different tastes around food and around the things that we needed around the apartment for around that week. And every time I would go to the shop, he would complain that I didn't buy certain things, so he would go out and buy them. So what we kind of did is that eventually, after a few days, we have eventually found out what items we mutually liked and what items we mutually disliked and some of them in between. So what I want you to do is I want you to imagine that you would be my flatmate. So what I want you to do is I want you to go through these receipts that we've uh, piled up and I want you to look through them and see if the item that you chose appears on that receipt. If it does, it means that we both like the item, so we're gonna place it in the pile right here. If we don't, we're just gonna forget about it. So the spectator would proceed to do that, and you tell him to take his time and look through uh, the receipts to see if he can find that item. Okay, so he would go through that process just like that. Okay. Perfect. So in this scenario, you would highlight that, okay, apparently it's something that we were close, but a bit iffy about. So what I want us to do here is, now that we've considered that, is I want you to think of this item and to think that you are actually going to a shop and that you are going to buy this item. Okay, so I want you to imagine you're walking in, you're in a hurry, you go inside of a shop and you have to grab this item and you go to the cash. You didn't go into your pocket, you rummage, you take out your credit card and you go quickly to scan, to tap your credit card, and then you quickly go to buy the item and rush home, okay? So I want you to think about that. So you tell them to do that and tell me, tell me when you've arrived home, when you've arrived home. Now I want you to imagine that you're going inside of the bag and you're removing this item. First, I want you to think is this something that you eat, something that you would, um, uh, use as a cleaning supply or something electronic, something like that. Can you think of what that is? Perfect. You proceed to say, it's, it's something you eat, correct? Perfect. I want you now to, to imagine eating that. Is it sweet or is it savory? Sweet or salty, savory. It's a sweet, right? But it's not, it's not a dessert or it's not something like ice cream. It's something more, it's, it's more like a snack. Would you, would you agree? They would say yes. It's also, I'm tasting, Chocolate, I'm tasting chocolate. Is it, it's chocolate, right? But not, it's not very known for its chocolate. It's also known for what's inside of the chocolate. It's caramel. Are you thinking of a Twix bar? And they would say, yes. So this is how the routine would look with my performance and some of the tips from some of the people in um, 
the tutorial. And everything that I did here, I didn't cut any corners. I did everything as it would look in performance. I did everything as it would look in performance, and that's how clean it would look in an actual performance, okay? So now that that's out, all out of the way, let's talk about what you get, where do you buy this, and how much does it cost? So you can buy this at any magic dealer. This is push, put out by Murphy's. So you're gonna be able to find this at any major or any small magic retailer. This will have it in stock. You can have both a US or a UK version. Now I ordered the US version, but they sent me the UK, but that's no problem because there's no Canadian version. So I'm just justifying this as if I were on a trip, as you saw in the presentation. So that flies by and no one really cares. But if you really are worried for that, they do give you the templates for these receipts. So you can just change the name of the shop. So let's say you're from Canada, instead of having uh, Sainsbury's, you could put something like Walmart, like Co instead of Tesco, you could put Costco. You could put, uh, if you're from uh, the region of maybe Quebec, you could put something like IGA or Metro, something like that. You could customize these receipts however you want. Okay, so that's possibility. But what you're getting are these five receipts made of Tyvek. So these are gonna last you probably a very long time, maybe even a lifetime, depending how much you use them. You're getting these five Tyvek receipts. You're getting an extra gimmick, okay? You're getting an extra gimmick. And then you're also getting the tutorial and all of this costs $24.99, okay? So first let's talk about, because I've mentioned you're getting this, you're getting an extra gimmick, which is gonna serve the purpose for you uh, to get the information that you need from the receipts because for those that are familiar with this type of effect, usually you do this with uh, lottery tickets or with lists uh, of numbers, right? So you'd have things on a different numbers and then you would divide a number. But this uses shopping lists in an interesting way with the same principle. So of course, with that principle, if you know it, you're not gonna be able to know what the item is by just knowing what the receipts tell you. You would need something to tell you what that item is and that is covered in the tutorial and that is provided to you. So you don't have to make it up or anything. It is provided to you in an extremely high quality, okay? So on top of that, you get the tutorial. The tutorial is very long, very long. As much as I appreciate long tutorials and I appreciate small tutorials and dislike long tutorials and dislike small tutorials, right? This is very long, but you're getting a lot of information. To be fully transparent, I haven't listened to all of it, okay? It is too long, this is almost six hours long for an effect that is relatively easy to perform. But I did watch most of it. I did watch even the videos that I didn't watch. I watched uh, kind of the main ideas there because in all of them, they kind of explain the main ideas at the start and then they just develop the thinking and they add certain touches upon the main ideas. But on the tutorial, you're getting the first video that you are getting is with Craig Petty explaining to you the history, the routining, and what the main routine is that he presents with this, okay? That routine is not for me. It is not something that I do or that I would do. It's just not for me and that's fine. But he does explain to you everything that he does in his routine to perform this with some additional tips. The second video is additional ideas. So Craig Petty presents you additional ideas by him and some of his friends. Then you have a third video, which is a kind of a masterclass on EDC by Peter Turner. So he talks about the routine, but he also in cat in like normal Peter Turner style, he explains to you some of the routines from some of his older projects. So he kind of gives you some golden insights for people like me that have been following Peter and have bought everything that he's almost ever put out. You know, those were refreshers. They were not new, but for a lot of people that haven't ventured into Peter Turner's work, maybe because it was too expensive, maybe because it ran out of stock, or maybe because they weren't aware of it, you are getting golden nuggets of information from Peter Turner in this tutorial. Then you have another video with Peter Nardi, then another video with Javier from Murphy's, and then you're getting another video with Lloyd Barnes, and then you're getting the templates for your receipt. So you're getting a lot for just $25. Okay, so having said all of that, having said all of that, is this difficult to perform? And the answer is no, this is not difficult to perform. The receipts and the gimmick do everything for you, literally everything. All you have to do is put a routine over this, okay? Craig's routine is much more comedic. So Craig routine introduces uh, an envelope and he says, you know, I'm just new to kind of this mentalism stuff or 
and this this is one of the worst predictions I have, but we're gonna attempt to make to give it justice. He then proceeds to do the procedure that I showed you, and then he tells you perfect. So in my case, it was two receipts and three receipts, and he says, you know, uh, do you think it was possible for me to know that the prediction is on two receipts rather than three? They're gonna say no. So you say, you said no, right? Because on the envelope, I wrote no. You make it as a gag, but you then open the envelope and you say, your prediction will be on three receipts. So it makes a bit up for it on two receipts. I mean, it makes a bit up for it, but it's not great in telling me no. A lot of people tell me after I do this effect that, you know, telling how many receipts the object is on isn't that interesting. It would be interesting for me to tell you what the object you're actually thinking about is. So then you would play out that you're not really sure and that you're new to this, but you're going to attempt to do it nonetheless. And then you would actually tell them what the object is they chose. That is Craig's routine. But for me, I'm not really good with comedy. I'm not the best, you know, when I'm with friends or just playing around, I love to joke around and do that. But when I'm doing magic, it's just not in my personality because I'm already a bit stressed. I'm already a bit, um, you know, anxious of performing. So going in and trying to crack jokes and then seeing them not maybe land or not land as they want is not something that I do. So I do it much more direct. I do it like an actual mentalism piece with a story and I do it much more direct uh, than that. But you can do this however you want. And there's a ton of ways that are presented to you in the tutorial video. There's also some additional ways that Craig put on his actual channel with playing cards. They can do this. So there's a lot of different ways. But difficulty wise, no matter the way that you actually perform it, nothing is too difficult. Maybe some people are going to find it difficult to justify using receipts, but honestly, you know, I'm in the camp that you're using so many props as a magician that justifying them doesn't really make sense, right? An artist doesn't have to justify that he has to carry around an easel, paint buckets, paint brushes, oil with him, right? He doesn't have to justify because it's what he does. So as a magician, I think that you know, justifying a deck of cards or justifying coins is, is not really needed, right? People expect us to have things to do things with, right? You wouldn't be a magician if you would just be able to read everyone's mind without ever saying anything because then you'd be a superhero, right? If they wouldn't have to write anything down because even in mentalism, people complain that, you know, why justify the billet? Why writing it down? So at that point, magic would literally be being a superhero and just going to someone, think of something and you would guess it. So to me, justifying props is not really necessary, especially when they look natural. Of course, if you're doing a routine with a goofy looking box that has rabbits sticking out and doves flying inside and trap doors everywhere, yeah, maybe you justify it. But something natural like cards or something just natural like a receipt, you don't need much justification as long as you give a framing to your routine, right? So for me, it's like if it was a trip and we're pretending that we're going on this trip together, that we're roommates, etc. Gives some justification to this, gives an intrigue, gives a reason, makes the specter think, makes him have fun, right? So I don't really think you have to go super in-depth in justifying these. But if you want, Peter Turner gives you some incredible ideas to justify the use of using the receipts in your wallet. Okay, so difficulty wise, again, nothing difficult. What about practicality? What do you have to carry around to do this routine? You just have to carry around this receipts. So you literally put this in your wallet, these receipts, and then your additional gimmick. Okay, your additional gimmick can be in the receipts. For me, my gimmick is you saw it in the routine. For a lot of people, they're probably going to know what it was, but I won't show it again, not to spoil it. But the gimmick fits uh, inside of this. Or if, as I mentioned, if you watch my previous review of the Fox, I know it was a little bit long, but in that one, I do talk about ways where you can, if you own the Fox, you can use the crib or you can use the gimmick of the, of ED seat to do, um, to have the kind of the information in a cleaner way. But even then I did it in the most casual way, right? And I think that for a lot of people, it flew by. And even for some people, I rose alarm bells. I think that you're thinking as a magician and that you saw how natural it is to just tell them perfect. So as you pay your price, et cetera, right? Uh, again, said a bit, said a bit much, but don't want to fully give it away. Okay. But that is what you are getting with this. So practicality wise, super easy to carry around your receipts and your gimmick, which fits in, which fits inside of the receipts or fits inside your wallet or fits anywhere that you want it to fit, right? You can literally customize it to fit anywhere that you want and knowing how the gimmick is and what it is 
you can literally make it to place it wherever you want okay so practicality wise it's very very good minimal pocket space and as with the name it's an everyday carry so it's meant to be put inside of your pocket or inside of your wallet now, where would you perform EDC? So EDC, again, by the name, it's something that you perform in your everyday everyday life as whatever someone asks for a trick, you could do this. Now, I wouldn't do this on stage or I wouldn't do this in parlor. Of course you can. For example, if you want to use this in parlor, you can use this as a pre-show, right? If you think about it, you can use this as a pre-show. You don't even need your extra gimmick as long as you lock in the information that the receipts tell you. You can use that as a, you tell them, okay, in a moment, at one point in the show, I'm going to ask for someone to think of an item they could buy as a grocery store. And you do the, the thing with them, you do a receipt with them and tell them, perfect. So you have that item. So it's an item that, and then let's say it's two, three receipts. You say, okay, perfect. So I see it's an item that not a, not a lot of people would necessarily go to. That's great. It means that it's harder to guess and it's harder to use and it's going to have a big impact in the show. So keep in mind that item. Please do not forget it. We're going to get to it in the show. So you could use it as a one head in a confabulation routine, right? Which is absolutely great. So you can play it for parlor stage, but not as a trick itself, as a tool, as a tool in your pre-show or before the show to get information and use in an actual other routine in a much cleaner way, because then you can ask someone. So you said, perfect. So we're going to ask you for that. We're going to ask uh, you there. Uh, we're going to ask you for an item that you can find on a grocery shopping list or on a grocery receipt. You got that? Then we're going to ask you for that. And then you could build this up into a really big confabulation routine. And the receipts were never seen by the audience. How clean is that? That is incredibly clean, right? Incredibly, incredibly clean. So you can use it like that if you want to use it for a parlor stage. If not, if you want to use it close up casual, you can use it just as I showed you as a thought experiment. You can use it as uh, Craig uses it more as kind of a, of a joke, right? Of a, starting out to a joke and building it to an actual mind reading effect. You can use that Peter Turner as a much serious thing. You could use it as Lloyd used it in a more visual way. So there's ways of doing this, right? Without any issue, right? So you can definitely, definitely use this however you want. And it's usable pretty much everywhere. So performance wise, it can be used as a tool for pre-show for stage or parlor, or it can be used as an actual uh, effect in your performance environment, wherever that may be. This could be performed anywhere as long as there's correct lighting to read the receipts. Because if it's too dark, maybe people aren't going to be able to read, but the information is written pretty big on the receipts. I'll just show it to you here, right? You can see that it maybe the camera even picks up and you can actually read it from the actual angle here. The receipts are very, very well made and you can see them even in more dimmer lights, but I wouldn't do anything too dark or if, you know, in the nightclub or anything like that, I wouldn't necessarily perform it there. So having said all of that, what are the positives and what are the negatives of EDC? So first of all, what are the negatives? And there's not many, there's not many negatives for this at all. I know for some people that doing the procedure of two to three receipts seems weird, but if you want to do Craig's presentation, it justifies it. It justifies the two, three, one, four receipts, however it may be. It justifies it completely, right? But for me, that's not a worry. But for some people, that could be a negative for this type of effect. For me, it's not, but I know it could be for some. Second of all is, um, I honestly don't even think there's a and the second one, maybe justifying the receipts, but that's pushing the envelope. And I honestly don't think it is a negative whatsoever, but I will mention because maybe it is for some. So having said all of that, what are the positives? The positives are this extremely well made. The tutorial video is extensive. I could say it's a bit of a negative that it's that long, but you know, it is still a great tutorial video with a lot of ideas, especially the Peter Turner two hour uh, kind of talk on this is just value right? For $25, you're getting a six hour video with two hours being Peter Turner workshopping his own ideas and his own material to you technically for free. Because if this was just the normal one hour video with Craig Petty talking about the routine, no one would have complained. But now you're getting so much information from so many brilliant minds, technically almost for free. The, the receipts are really well built. The gimmick is really well made. And the fact that you can edit both the gimmick and the receipts is absolutely great. So there's a lot of good to say about this. 
Would I recommend EDC by Craig Petty? Yes, I think if you're looking for something quick, a mentalism routine inside of your pocket that's easy to do and seems organic and is and it can play as serious or as comedic as you want, then this is definitely recommended, especially for the price you cannot find cheaper or better. This is great. What would I rate EDC by Craig Petty out of 10? I would rate it a 9 out of 10. It is a very, very, very good effect. It's not the best effect I've seen, so usually I give 10s to effects that, you know, changed my perception, was really an effect that I didn't expect to like as much. But this I expect to like, I knew what it was, I knew what its purpose was, so I can't really give it the max score, but it is nonetheless very good. I will perform it and it is great, a 9 on 10 for me. Make sure to like, subscribe and comment as with every video. And I'll see everyone in the next one coming up just in a few days. Thank you so much for watching and see you in that one.